Welcome to the first ever Cars Ireland Drag Race. It's me versus the Cooper S's roof. You see, it goes down in 18 seconds. So Tim is going to sit in the car, open the roof. I'm going to head down the road there about 100, 120 meters. And we're going to race and I'm going to win. Right, before we get into the nuts and bolts of this review, and in the interest of full disclosure, my current wife and former girlfriend used to own a Mini Cooper S, a cream convertible with the 1.6 supercharged engine. And I absolutely loved it. It was the best thing going. Do you know, we both shed a tear when she traded it in. I missed that car so much. So I may be a bit biased and you have been warned. So let's get into it. Today we are in the Sidewalk Edition, which is a limited run of only 150 models for Ireland and the UK. So it has some funky little extras like the stripes on the bonnet, checkered roof, little decals here, and these special scissors 17 inch alloys. And a couple of bits in the interior that we'll show you later. Now, as this is a Mini Cooper with the all important S, you know it's packing some heat. And thanks to this bulge, you can really tell. Underneath, a two liter turbocharged engine with 192 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. Tasty bit of kit. Moving on to the boot. Well, unsurprisingly, it's not massive. 215 liters when the roof is up and you lose some of that when the roof is down. There's a handy little easy load function here where you can pull these levers either side and you get a bit more access through the roof. Handy. And the boot lid can actually hold 80 kilos if you feel like sitting on it or you're loading stuff in and you can prop it there first. So yeah, smallish, but not too bad. So the first thing when you sit up front is you really notice the high quality materials everywhere. It's really well built and just a nice place to be. Lovely leather steering wheel, everything feels solid. You sit nice and low, yeah, it's a really nice place to sit. I'm a big fan of the stop start switch. So what happens is it sort of pulses red. There's a little light behind it, pulses red. When you put your foot on the brake, it goes solid red, just to encourage you to start it up. Press start. There's a nice little noise of it too. It just sort of pops and bangs as well. It's great noise. The armrest is nicely set too. Plus you can pop your phone in there too, which is handy. Keeps it out your eye line as well, so safer. And there's a really nice little lever just to slot it in. I think it has wireless charging too, my phone doesn't, but I think that does. Cool little spot there. So as this is the sidewalk edition, you get some extra sidewalk stuff, like the blue on the door, sidewalk on the steering wheel, some yellow stitching on the lovely leather seats, they're really comfy too, and some blue piping too. I think it's petrol blue. And on the doors, you have the sill that says sidewalk and has those little triangle designs too. There's also more design flourishes up in front of the passenger with this panel here, and it's the same for the driver on this side too. The seats are heated as well on this model, so on a day like today when it's cold but dry and you want to have that roof down, you will be very thankful for a heated bum, that is for sure. You also get some Harman Kardon speakers. There's some USB down here and a 12 volt. Those USBs are one USB standard and one USB-C, just to keep everyone happy. You have the 8.8 inch touchscreen here, which is nicely mounted in this little circular bit here. It has everything you'd expect, but I don't think it has Android Auto. I am a big fan of the sat-nav. It has sort of a cartoonish vibe to it, but it looks really cool. Sort of like, um, do you remember the maps in Grand Theft Auto in the corner? It has that kind of vibe to it. it just looks really cool and it's a bit different to, the sort of stuff everywhere else. You can also control the infotainment via a few dials down here at the handbrake, which is also handy if you don't want to be reaching over and touching the screen. The steering wheel, you can move up and down, which is kind of handy. And the binnacle actually moves with it, so it makes everything a lot easier to see. All in all, great place to be. 
Now the back is not so great. If you had shorter people in the passenger seat and the driver was a bit shorter, you could squeeze people in there, but you're not getting in behind my driving position in a million years. So usable for shorter people, but not if I'm driving, sorry. Okay, so this is the bit I'm most excited about. I just hope nostalgia is not a seductive liar. So what can roughly 200 brake horsepower and a two liter turbo engine do in a tiny little mini? Well, quite a lot, unsurprisingly. Um, zero to 100 kilometers an hour takes about seven seconds. Although I think it feels faster. Maybe it's in my head, but it feels faster. It's probably that low down, more exposed feeling than you get in some other cars. In today's sidewalk edition, we have the seven speed auto Steptronic box. It works away in the background really well, changes, you really want to feel them. And for the most part, I think you'd be happy enough just sticking it in auto mode and letting it do the work. If you're feeling a bit more enthusiastic, you have some flappy paddles here on the steering wheel. And if I just drop down one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you can't really feel them and you can control it yourself. Oh yeah, it sounds pretty good too. Yeah, they're good. Grip is immense, my God. Sometimes it feels like it's on magnets, like they're just underneath pulling it along. It just hangs on really well. Drop a gear and go. Yeah, sounds good too. You, you can get pops and bangs out of it as well if you uh, so wish. <laughs> One thing, if you've never driven a Cooper S, this might surprise you, but the weight on the steering is quite hefty and meaty. And it does surprise you at times because, you know, it's such a pretty little dainty car that maybe you think the steering will be lighter just because of the small dimensions, but they really do put some heavy steering into the Cooper S. Now, something that I don't miss is the suspension stiffness on that previous generation. It was 2006. It would rattle the teeth out of your head just when you hit anything. This much better, it seems much better damped overall. It deals with most bumps really well, aside from like the really sharp stuff that jumps through. Other than that, I wouldn't have many complaints about comfort, it's, it's really good. Like we're not on the best of roads here and it's certainly not shocking through the cabin. It's not upsetting me. Whereas that previous generation, two generations, how old am I? The previous generation was way stiffer and not as well damped as this and the heavens are about to open now. I suppose this shows you why, uh, <laughs> this shows you the joys of convertible life in Ireland. So we've had a sunny day, a nice dry day, and now it's piddling down. So, as I was saying before being rudely interrupted by mother nature, and as you can see, it's really really sunny now the only thing i will say is maybe the handling isn't quite as playful as the looks if that makes sense it's very grippy and there's very little playfulness from the steering like you can't you can't i don't know you can't dance with it there's no there's no messing about it's just very stuck to the road does its job handles well it's a strange thing to give out about but when it looks so much fun maybe you're your mind is drawn to the fun aspect of it. The Cooper S also comes with driving modes which you operate via those cool little toggles down here. So you have sport, mid and green. You'll spend most of your time in mid. Green, I don't know, maybe it's a bit ambitious but I've not tried it enough to really know if it works. And sport is obviously sporty. I didn't notice a huge amount of difference between suspension and steering. The suspension stays at that sort of stiff but supple feel all the way through. Steering always stays meaty and hefty. However, when you pop it into sport mode, you do notice the exhaust gets a bit louder and that engine is just off the leash a bit more. So we'll pop it in sport now. Hope the mics can pick it up, I don't know if it will. Just give it a bit of beans. Yeah, sounds good. Really responsive too. So just to finish up, we'll go through fuel economy. It's actually very impressive for what is a sporty car with high power, but I suppose it depends on your right foot. That's a big meaty engine, this is a small car, and you can keep that engine not really working a whole lot, 
and just tipping along 36 miles per gallon is very good I think you could probably get more but if you have a heavy right foot that will drop unsurprisingly so that's it for the Mini Cooper S sidewalk I don't think nostalgia has tainted my view of this at all still love it it's still great fun it still looks so cool I suppose a big downside is it's not cheap like really not cheap it's 47,000 euro if you'd like to search Cars Ireland for any Mini whatsoever, please do click on the link above. Ah, I'll miss this when it goes back. Oh well. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's good. It's good, good, good. Right. Good luck.